our guest on today's episode is a very amazing woman whom we all know. She is the matron in the one of the patrons of the TIS Master Chef Cooking Club. Help me welcome our guest, Aunt Sophia. Aunt Sophia, welcome to today's episode and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and it's a pleasure. Okay. So you're going to start off light. So the first question is with your dreadlocks, how long have you had them for and what inspired you to dye the tips brown? Okay, so I've had the dreadlocks for, it's actually sister locks, um, for three years. Um, what inspired, I have three kids actually, so it was becoming a bit stressful going to the salon every now and then. So I decided to just do something that would be easier for me to handle. And then with a brown, with, with a golden look, I think it's just, I wanted to choose a color that will not be too obvious. Obvious. So, um, did you, did you, okay, you said you didn't always want to do it, but you just yeah. wanted something like a uh, way, uh, easy to go look. Yeah. Okay. So, who do you think is the biggest fan of your dreadlocks? Your kids, the kitchen staff, anyone? The students and my kids. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so how long have you been a matron at CIS? Um, I came here since 2019, so that three years. Three years, wow. And have you enjoyed your journey so far? Yes, I have. Uh, TIA is, is actually my first school. Um, I've always worked in hotels and restaurants. So this is my first school and I find it very exciting. Initially, I was a bit hesitant because I thought it was going to be boring. But I must say, it's been challenging and very exciting. Of the two. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, and um, so what do you think is the most important factor when it comes to cooking? Is it an ingredient? Is it the emotion? Is it um, who you are cooking for? What do you think is the most important factor? The love for, for what you want to do because um, cooking is something that you need, it's, it's an art. Cooking is an art, and if you don't love it, you will not get it right. And one other aspect of cooking that you need to get right is the preparation. You need to really get everything in order for you to be able to come up with something great. Um, so on the topic of food, in TIS sometimes food happens to get finished. Yes, and for some time now, when the food gets finished, the quicker alternative or the alternative that usually run to is Indomie, right? And most students do like Indomie, but yeah. do not want that as the alternative when they're eating. So do you have anything to say about that? Um, I, that's a 50-50. I'll give a 50-50 answer to that. Because really, uh, most students also want the Indomie. Auntie, can we have Indomie? Auntie, can we have Indomie? And also, during COVID, because Indomie is not a very healthy meal, we stopped cooking that for the students for some time. So we thought that, okay, since they've not had it for a very long time, we can use that for them to have a feel of it once in a while. Okay, that's nice. So for the kitchen staff, who, who came up with the idea of the shirts? Like what inspired the shirts? I know they come in two colors, the orange and the green. So who came up with the idea for the shirts? Okay, so I came up with the idea. Um, you see... Um, cooking is a very tedious uh, profession, very tedious. So I just wanted to do something that will bring um, a special feel. Just, even though they are tired, they, they, they still feel a bit excited. So, and I realized that most of my staff like to look good. When you see them coming to work or after work, they don't look like those who wore the uniform. They, they look different. So I realized that, okay, so if they are cooking and they look different, they will, they will have that same feel and it will, it will affect the output. So that's why. And then the, I really thought through what I wrote. Yeah, the mantra. Yes, I really thought through it. And I feel that anything I wrote on it actually depicts the work that they do, especially the, the, the orange one that says, gifted hands that nourish. I thought through the, the role we play here as contributing to the to the nutritive journey for the student so that's that's why i chose i chose that because you you need to have something special to be able to cook 
So I felt their hands were gifted, and it's something that came from God. That's why I, I wrote that on the t-shirt. Really nice, I really love the cooking with love and passion. I mean, yeah. It just, it, it just sounds really, yeah, yeah. It's very nice. Okay. So, um, how do you feel when people waste food? Um, I feel very down, but at the same time, I know I'm dealing with um, adolescents. And I've done a lot of reading around adolescents and food. And I know that sometimes they eat according to how they are feeling. So in as much as I feel down, um, I don't get angry over it. I just um, try to see it as one of the things that adolescents will exhibit. Some days the waste is very small. Other days it's, it's quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think is the most heartbreaking thing students has uttered about the food like what's the one thing one student has said that really got you thinking like why yeah. did you say something like that okay so someone once said that the chicken there's something no seating about the chicken and i was i was thinking through it what 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 would that be no seating is quite a strong word to use yes so but it's okay um when you are cooking for people, feedback is something you should love because that is the only way you get better. So it got me thinking about how we can season the chicken better or how to wash it better or how to handle it better to take care of that situation because it's not everyone that will come out to tell you some of these things. So if someone gets the, the confidence to do that, you have to take it in good faith because some, some organizations actually pay for feedback. Yeah, so it's, it's a good thing that people tell you how they feel after they have eaten your meal. Okay, so I guess that's also one of the most important factors. Of very, very, feedback. very feedback, very and important. That's a you should always be Exactly, to. very open-minded about it. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so what do you think is the TI's favorite combo? Like breakfast, lunch, snack, lunch, dinner. Like what do you think is the four-way four meal that to go? Well, there are a lot, but I think that... For breakfast, the days we have um, baked beans, sausage, bread, tea, and then for lunch, the days we have beef burger and the uh, fries, and then for dinner, bolognese yeah. and bread. Yeah. So if if I want to pick one set, that's that's what I'll pick. Okay. And for you, what is your favorite meal of all the meals we have? What's your favorite meal? Unfortunately, I don't have a favorite meal because I'm not very, a very foodie, foodie person. But on an ordinary day, I'll take um, maybe green salad, uh, braised rice, and then fresh pepper. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe some grilled fish. Mm. Yes, that's, that's nice yeah, thing. yeah. Um, so, what's the, what's the worst decision you've made as a leader? To be in TIS or out of TIS? Wow, the worst decision I have made. Okay, I will say that um, I've, not, I've not had a worst decision because um, when you are managing people, I'm a, I'm a leader who likes to listen. I listen a lot. So sometimes people have managed to think that I'm slow in taking decisions. But I'm the kind of person that I want people to perform in my absence. My goal is that anyone I, I manage should be able to perform in my absence. So maybe sometimes if you want to say worse, that's when people think I'm slow. So maybe that's, that's the part that I'll say, okay, maybe I've been too slow to take a certain decision about something. Maybe that, that's what it's going to be. But... Worse is quite a strong word to use, yes, yes. Um, so if you're in the cooking department, okay. okay. If you would like if you could switch to any other department for a day, any department in TS, for which department would it be and why? Psychology. Psychology because um I like to understand people and why they do what they do. Because I believe that when people understand what they do, they perform better. I don't believe in the military way of managing people. So I would like to 
do psychology because I would want to understand people and even understand my own self. Because when you, you learn to understand yourself and manage yourself, you're able to, to manage and understand others as well. So most, you mentioned you have three children. Yes. And most parents will not pick favorites. But for this show, wow. which of your children is your favorites? It could be because they are the calmest or they mm -hmm. learn the most or they are most respectful. Just for the purpose of this show, which of your children is your favorites? Wow, this is... And I can't... Wow. Because all my three kids have a special... Yeah, there's the one factor. A special... So maybe... If it's okay, if it's of factors, what do you okay, like so like so my first child is 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 a girl, Emerald. Um, I like Emerald because she's very decisive and she can be very. She behaves like she's my junior sister. She's always like monitoring me, and she's very very determined. And then uh, my my second child who is a boy, RJ. RJ is very patient and loving, and very forgiving. Even when you are being stern on him, he will easily comes back to you. Mm. And then my last son, um, Ronald. Ronald speaks his mind. He doesn't hide his feelings, and that's what I like about him. Yeah. That's very nice. Okay, so how do you balance your home and work life? Because like? uh, being a cook can be very strenuous and yeah. takes a lot of time, very demanding. So how do you? I think I plan. I plan a lot. I have a to-do list at home, a to-do list at the office, and I try to um, plan way ahead. That's, that's how I've been able to, because like I said, I mentioned earlier that with catering, the most important aspect of cooking is preparation. In, in the French term, we call it mise en place. That's, that's if you go to any serious kitchen, it's a whole department. The mise en place department is... It's like it's the heart of the kitchen. We have one in TIS at the back. That's where the cutting, the washing and everything is done. And I really value those people because what they, what they, they bring to the job, like their, their contribution is really what helps us to be able to deliver and also deliver on time. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of students seem to prefer local meals to the um, rice and the continental. So yeah, continental. What do you have to say about that? Um, I think that I think that um, I've been here for three years. There are, there are easy switches because when I came in here, the students did not like the the local food at all because we when you make banco and okra, we have a lot left. Palm nut soup, there's a lot left. Um, Wache, there's a lot left. Contumery stew. But I think with time, I realized that people, I think, and let's not forget that people leave this place every year. We have students graduating every year. So we get, to, we, we, we get to get in new people at every point in time. I think that every point in time we have new people and they also have their own taste. But I think for now, I agree with you if you say that a lot of students like the local dishes and we are really putting a lot in place to make sure that we satisfy every, everyone. Rice has to be the, one of the biggest topics in the MPH. Rice, rice, rice. Um, it's one of the main cons constituents of most of the meals. Yeah. So most people ask, why rice all the time? Do you have anything to say about that? Okay, so I think on two occasions. Okay, so I've had these this complaints. So I, I had a discussion with my assistant. I know what I want to serve food without rice on two occasions. I just want to see the reaction. I want to see what what is going to happen, how the students are going to take it. Um, we tried it and then we still had, if I'm not exaggerating, we still had 40% of people who wanted rice in addition to whatever we provided. So it's difficult to take rice away from the menu at all. There's, there's always rice with another. So maybe what we need to work out, um, work on as a team is to um, get the percentage right when it comes to what we add on to the rice, yes. Um, so of your kitchen staff, who do you think is the funniest and who do you think is like the calmest and most quiet? Wow, the funniest, there are a lot of them. There are lots of them. There's, um, there's Alex, there's Johnny, there's Yao. Uh, there are a lot. <laughs> Um, bright, it's funny, 
and then the ladies, uh, Gwendoline. I have a lot of quiet, you know, cooking is hectic, so yeah, uh, not to forget Jennifer. There are a lot of interesting people out there. But the calm ones, Josephine, Sami, my assistant Frida, she's calm, but she's she's very she's a very exciting person. But Frida is, is very calm, yeah. So apple juice. <laughs> Previous MPH executives have promised us apple juice. I came in grade ten, and I've been, I've been waiting on my apple juice for the past three years. So, is it truth be told? Is it in the works? Like, will it come? Um, apple juice is is coming. It will come before the semester will end. Okay. I agree with you. I've I've also had a lot of people coming to me. Auntie, can we have apple juice? We are tired of the pineapple juice. So it's something we are working at, and um, I promise it will come. Yes, it will before come before. End. Yes, okay. before the end of this semester, before the apple, the, the end, end of, of this semester, semester. apple no apple juice will, will appear. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So um, last year or last semester, I particularly, I feel like everybody knows it, but there was so much variety in the news, like so many different types of foods that we all really appreciated. But most of us still. Like meals such as like the um, the fried yam, okay, and the juice on Wednesdays, like the yeah. juice for breakfast. And yeah, spring rolls. It's yeah. very scarce nowadays. Yeah, and so most of us would want to know why those meals are not really with us appearing. Now. Okay, yeah. so um, I mentioned earlier that there are a lot of switches in terms of the preferences. So last semester, we were using uh, three menus. So menu A, menu B, menu C. Now, we were using those menus. I wanted to be able to identify what the students really like. Yes, because students were asking for variety. But for me to be able to tell what they really like, we were using, you know, and I, I, I was getting people even complain that, oh, auntie, sometimes when we are coming to the MPH, we don't even know what we are coming to. So I used that um, to do like a survey for, to tell me, but um, I've heard Friday I'm in our conversation today, and I think I'll, 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 I'll keep an eye on the Friday I'm. So for this semester, we are using only two menus. We narrowed it down to two. Yes, because we realized that there are certain things that the student didn't really like. So we took them, but I'm sure... I guess we forgot about the juice and then the, the, the fried yam, and we are going to bring it back. Okay. So I've been asking you a lot of questions about yeah. cooking, about the school. Let's shift to you a little bit. Okay. Um, what are three major lessons you've learned since joining the school, like since working as a matron here? Okay. So the, the first thing I have learned, um, I have learned how to, to deal I've learned um, a few parental tips of how to manage my own children. And then I've also learned how to be open-minded because I'm dealing with a lot of people at the same time. So it has really taught me to be open-minded. Another thing I have, I have learned is, you know, over here I've met a lot of people from different nationalities and I interact a lot with the students and I, I get to understand their way of thinking. And one thing I don't want to forget, I have learned how to easily forgive people. Yes, because sometimes people say things that they don't really, even some students say things they don't really mean. I've learned to be very open-hearted and very forgiving, yeah. Okay, so when you were in school, what was your favorite subject? Um, I like reading. I like reading a lot. Mathematics was not my friend at all. It followed me all the way to the university, and I didn't like mathematics, but reading, yes. Okay. Um, so many African parents want their children to be engineers, lawyers, doctors, and um, so you are a chef. So how do your parents feel about you wanting to be a chef? Okay, to tell you the truth, I growing up, I wanted to be a lawyer, and um, I remember when I finished secondary school, my dad and I had a meeting and he said, oh, so I think the way you are outgoing and all that, you do well at catering. And I wasn't even a kitchen person. But 
Well, I trusted his. I know that some people will say it's not good for the for your parents to choose your career for you, but I think he made a good choice. I'm sure from my childhood to my secondary level, he had observed me and he felt. And I had a few aunties who also shared the same. They, they said they thought I was out. They, they think I'm outgoing, so I'll do well at catering. So that's. And I think I haven't regretted at all. In my next journey, I'll, I'll take catering again. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. So growing up, did you have a nickname? Do you have one now? Um, I I had a nickname. Okay, so I have I have my 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 siblings call me Softy, because I have an uncle who thinks I'm too I'm too tough, so he's going to call me Softy so that I'll soften up. So, and I got a Softy throughout even to the university level. People still and my friends still call me Softy. Yes, okay. I think it has helped. I think it has helped. The Softy has helped. I've become very sober. Okay. Do you have any nicknames in TIS? Um, yeah, I, have, I, have, I have quite. There's some people call me Swallow, people call me Fofoy. Fofoy means flower. And, what and are then it's, it's gone. It's oh. gone. And then, oh, there are others. Maybe there are others that I don't even know about, but the ones I hear is. And then Auntie Sophie, Sophie, you know, I, yes. <laughs> Maybe there are others that I've, I've, I've not heard, but these are the few that I know, yeah. Yes, um, a lot of people are loving the hot fries we have these days, like the ones that are made right before you get to the yeah. age, um, instead of the pre-fried ones. Yeah. Are those going to continue? Can you promise us? Um, okay, yes, because what, what happened was that we realized that with COVID and all, we needed to eat food at a certain, um, the heat should be, we should get the heat right. And then at the same time, too, a lot of uh, the students were complaining that when it's cold, they don't enjoy it. So we had to work on the time that we started the frying. Okay. So that's, that's, and I promise that it's, it's going to continue. Okay. Okay. So we have one last question for you. And yes, one last question. As an individual, what makes you happy? When the people I cook for are satisfied. It makes, it makes me very happy because I, I want to add that when I wake up every day, I know that the lives of people are in my hands. If something goes wrong in the kitchen, it means it's, it's going to really affect people. So when I come to work and I go back and everyone eats and nothing happens, I get a lot of fulfillment, yes. That's, that's very, very, very interesting. That's very good. So... Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today's, in today's episode. We've, I've had a very good time. I hope you also enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And see you in next week's episode. Bye. Bye.